Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you reviews of the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth the trip to the theater or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes and let's dive into the world of film and television together. On today's episode, I'm talking about the upcoming film, Cult Killer, coming out this year, 2024. One of the early releases of 2024, directed by John Kies, written by Charles Burnley, starring Shelley Hennig, uh, Alice Eve, and Antonio Banderas. In this movie, when a renowned private investigator is murdered, his protege takes on his case. As her investigation unfolds, she is forced into a dangerous alliance with his killer to uncover the town's grisly secret that brings justice to its victims. Uh, kind of a spoiler in the description there. <laughs> uh, this is another movie that I received uh, a screener for, which I am very thankful. A anytime... Anybody wants to reach out with a screener for me to review, I love it. I love getting those emails and uh, jumped at the opportunity for this movie, which I had never heard anything about. Uh, it will be in theaters January 19th. So it's one of the films where I got it way before. This is I don't think this hit any independent uh, festivals or anything like that. So it'll be in theaters January 19th. And this movie feels like a film that would get released in January. Sad to say. Uh, that is to say that this movie was kind of okay. It was an okay movie. Uh, it's not a horrible movie. I, I didn't. I didn't regret the time spent watching it. Uh, it is a a pretty decent movie. Uh, and with only a few changes, I think it could have been a much better movie. Uh, but other than that, it was just just okay. Um, and also not really a movie I would necessarily recommend to anybody. But if somebody told me that they were going to throw this movie on, uh, I wouldn't tell them to avoid it. Uh, you know, it's just kind of, it's a mid-movie. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's got problems. It could have been way better. The elements within this film are good. And if it had been written better or different or directed different, maybe it would have utilized those elements in a better way. And uh, it just, just felt so like... It felt like a bummer. It felt like a bummer. Because there's like just some like basic stuff that they they had handled differently it would have made it some so much more interesting than it was but uh i didn't hate the time watching it i thought it was a good movie always fun to see antonio banderas and something but uh overall it's not gonna be you know as far as my top five movies of 2024 is concerned this being the first movie i'm reviewing in the new year that was released this year, uh, I spoiler warning for the end of this year <laughs> for 12 months from now, but uh, this movie's probably not going to be on the list. Let's put it that way. It's not going to be my top five. Um, but again, not a horrible movie. Let's take a short break from this episode. Listeners, if you're an art lover like I am or simply somebody who appreciates unique creativity, I've got something you'll adore. Dive into the world of the many faces, an ongoing series of mesmerizing ink paintings on paper. Each piece is a captivating blend of abstract and surreal, always presenting a face that tells its own story. 
The dedication behind this series is unmatched with new paintings being released every single day. And if you're thinking about owning one, you're in luck. You can start with a 4x6 original painting for just $20. And if you desire something grander, there are larger sizes available with prices to match. Imagine having an original piece of art infused with emotion and mystery gracing your space. So, if you're intrigued, don't wait. Check out the entire collection and get your own at InspireDisorder.com. Own a piece of creativity that will truly stand out. Now let's get back to the show. And like I said, it's an interesting film. I had no idea what to expect going into this film, having never heard of it. Uh, you know, even I think I watched the trailer, you know, to at least uh, in this situation when it comes to screeners i i don't know i i don't know why i watched the trailer to this i think maybe i was just trying to get a vibe of what it was going to be about the poster kind of made it feel like an action movie uh you know and uh the trailer almost gave it whodunit vibes kind of like seven or maybe like a neo-noir and even the movie, you know when you start watching it's like it could still be all of those things and there's even characters that specifically reference neo-noir films and books in comparison to what's going on in the movie or what they may uh, encounter in the movie. So in, in a way, I was expecting it to be more of a neo-noir, considering even the characters uh, kind of feel like they're in a neo-noir. Um, or some kind of uh, a whodunit, you know, this mystery that unfolds. Who is the killer? What is the mystery of the town? Uh, but I never felt any of that from the film, right? The mysteries are kind of effortlessly uncovered, sadly, uh, pretty early on as well. Uh, so the mystery the investigation the who aspect of who done it kind of already exposed and the why everything is happening is uh isn't far behind like we find out why things are happening pretty soon as well i mean it's really not that is one of the big bummers of this movie it removes all tension and suspense when you find out everybody involved and what's going on to the point where characters are like super open about what's going on like it's not even close to them it's not even like a situation where they have to get the information they have to trick the people into uh, offering information about what things are happening it's just it's just freely offered and available. It is the, the you're just watching events happen, knowing kind of where what everything is and where everything's probably going to go. Uh, and I saw in preparation for this episode, I saw a description, an early description of this movie uh, where it was categorized as a horror film. Uh, and it's clearly not a horror film in any way either, in, in addition to the other genres I mentioned. But maybe there were different versions of the script, and maybe it started off as a horror film, which I could see that being kind of like a dark, like Seven or uh, Silence of the Lambs, right? really tonally going dark with it i could see this movie doing that but that's not what they did uh so it's do definitely doesn't feel like a horror film at all um but maybe that would explain why maybe they had to change things maybe f people financing it didn't like it studios who knows but uh Maybe the script was changed to try and make it more of a mystery. Maybe they were trying to turn it into a neo-noir and just failed. I don't know. Uh, in the production notes for the film, uh, apparently about a third of the movie originally was written to take place at night. 
But when they arrived in Ireland to film in June, uh, th- when they have virtually no nighttime in June, uh, with it not getting dark until 11.30 p.m., which that's kind of crazy. 11.30 p.m., it's probably dark for like four hours. Uh, yeah, and the sun comes up at 4 a.m., so you get four and a half hours of darkness, which I am sure it's not even that dark. That's got to be great. That's got to be another reason Ireland's like, you know, next level <laughs> as far as like energy wise, I would say. Uh, so they had to rewrite much of the movie to take place during the day, which creates an interesting level of tension to the story. And I would, you know, I think there's definitely, I mean, definitely horror movies that take place during the day that are unsettling, like Midsommar. Uh, you could definitely do like a mystery who done it, like uh, Glass Onion, w- took place mostly during the day. Uh, I'm sure there's neo noirs like Brick, another Ryan Johnson film. Uh, a lot of Brick takes place during the day, uh, but I it I'm unaware of what they were trying to do in what their intentions were. Was the intention to make this a neo noir? Was this supposed to rely on it being a mystery because if it is all of those things fall apart in this movie but there are aspects of this movie i liked don't get me wrong it wasn't a bad movie it's just it's a movie that i while watching it wish it it was better i wanted i was disappointed i wanted more for this movie right i i believe this movie could have been a lot better and i'm a big fan of antonio banderas uh there's a lot of kind of origins of one of the character uh teaming up with antonio banderas like these flashbacks that happen throughout the the movie i liked all of those scenes um even the root of this movie is compelling the why and the people who are doing these things uh that gets uncovered I think is very interesting but there is no attempt by those characters to hide what they are doing in any way which is just like then what is this this isn't a mystery if like everybody's pretty open about what's they're doing we find out all the players involved there's no mystery in who's involved it's just like then what are we even doing right but all of that this movie was okay it wasn't horrible i'm not i don't hate this movie i just love what this movie could have been and you know because i love i like those kinds of movies right so this not horrible but also not great let's take a quick break from the show Listeners, are you ready to take your experience with The Ray Taylor Show to the next level? Dive into Inspired Disorder Plus. For just $5 a month, you unlock a world of premium content that's sure to satisfy your every entertainment and artistic craving. Imagine enjoying The Ray Taylor Show, a full week completely ad-free in both audio and video formats. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Get exclusive access to live painting archive. You get to be the first to lay eyes on new releases from the many faces and enjoy members-only discounts and deals that will have you coming back for more. With a treasure trove that includes a podcast back catalog boasting 14 unique shows and over 600 episodes, personal insights through Ray Taylor's own blog, that is my personal blog, as well as my creative writing to spark your imagination, and an interactive Ask Me Anything section. Inspired Disorder Plus is a feast for the curious mind. Ready to elevate your entertainment game? Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become a member of an exclusive club. Dive in indulge and inspire your senses now let's get back to the show 
But I do want to talk about spoilers for this film. So this movie has not come out. comes out January 19th. Uh, I would highly recommend not listening to the spoilers. Because I would hate to hear spoilers about any movie. But, you know, maybe, uh, you know, when you see this movie, hit pause, come back to this episode later. Or if you don't mind spoilers, I know people that love spoilers. They don't care if movies are spoiled. I don't understand how those people exist or enjoy so many movies where spoilers are such a major flavor. But they exist and you can do with this episode whatever you want. As I get into spoilers right now, uh, when this movie started, like throughout this movie, I was struggling to figure out what this movie was. What kind of movie am I watching? And when it started, I thought I was watching like an old man action movie. You have Antonio Banderas. There's like kind of this action-y scene in a bar where our two main characters first meet. Um, And... I thought maybe it was going to be like, you know, all of those Liam Neeson movies, Taken and and uh, the Wolf one and the, the Grey and the, all the other, like his whole career that he's been doing for like the last 10 years. Uh, old man action movies, even like the, the Equalizer movies, uh, old man action movies. There's a lot of old man action movies. And I thought that's what this was going to be. And I'm all for it. I love Antonio Banderas. I love young Antonio Banderas, you know, Desperado, so many great movies. Uh, and his voice work in, like, the Puss in Boots movies are great. Where it's great action, he's the voice, not doing the action. So I'm all for Antonio Banderas in an old man action movie, but it's not what it is. <laughs> it's, it's not what it is. Not a whole lot. It's not an action movie at all. Uh and he kind of meets this our main character and is kind of parenting her in a lot of ways uh like she seemed to have things under control she was like drunk at this bar and it seemed like she was baiting the th- those three guys who were also at the bar she was drinking with into falling her out like she was looking like she was baiting them so that she can knock them all out right Right, she's some, uh, you know, a Me Too superhero lady. Um, she also doesn't seem very drunk at all. And then when she comes in and they, they have their conversation or whatever, it's just like, I don't know. She seemed like she could handle herself. She was choking out one guy while two other guys were, like, kind of waiting to for their, their other dude to pass out. You have him getting there's so there's kind of the you know kind of a fun little kind of an action set piece and later on we see as antonio banderas's character who we find out as an investigator as he's investigating this thing he gets stabbed by a woman kind of out of nowhere right later on we find out this woman is the killer and that she accidentally stabbed him because she thought he was part of the evil cabal that was, uh, you know, the the real villain of this movie. These old people in their playhouse. And so she, because she didn't do her research, this investigator gets killed. Uh, who He's investigating her first murder, right? So he gets killed kind of out of nowhere, wasn't expecting him to get killed. And then it's like, okay, this movie is going to be about her kind of a revenge movie, but a revenge movie in investigation. She's going to uncover the truth. What really happened to her friend, her, her mentor, her Yoda. Uh, But even that isn't really, she doesn't really do anything. Uh, and her crying face looks more like she's holding in a laugh than it does look like she's crying, which I, you know, I don't, I don't know how you could, people look how they look when they cry. But when she was crying, it looked like she was about to burst out in laughter. Um, 
but we find out through we get a lot more of their relationship through flashbacks where he helped her get sober uh which she didn't even seem drunk in the bar scene right she seemed like she was baiting those guys uh but i misread it and i completely will not take responsibility and just blame her acting (laughs) that she just i mean it really seemed like she was acting drunk like her character was acting drunk in order to bait these guys right who were going to take advantage of her for being drunk but turns out she was actually drunk and she could just handle herself also but he helps get her sober uh and then she happens to relapse on the same night that he was killed is when they call her to come in and take over the case she wakes up hung over um and somehow she gets assigned as special investigator uh because this lawyer comes in who wants the investigation into his client's murder to be called off which is just like just there's so much of this writing that's just like that doesn't make sense like i understand you need things to happen but like It's so suspect if a lawyer's going in. It's like, you need to stop investigating my client's murder. It doesn't make any sense why the police would be like, okay, well, now we're going to investigate you and your other clients if this is what you're going out in the open to. Like, it's the least tact there has ever been. And, of course, her mentor was killed in the same way, which links that murder, which she wants to solve, with this other murder that's connected to this lawyer and his other clients. So it's, you know, the setup, not the greatest, but it sets everything up. And, you know, she's investigating her mentor's murder. She's also trying to investigate the case he was investigating that her linked because people were killed in the same way so she's trying to find who the killer is right that's the big that's the big mystery right now who's the killer and she seems like she can handle herself like she can not only just investigate or whatever but she's like physically she has martial arts capabilities which still i'm like okay she's shown she can be do like actiony stuff and this is an investigation is this going to be like some kind of action movie or some kind of neo-noir right and we get more connections she had with antonio's character him teaching her his job as an investigator how just the reality of his job is very boring uh so you know of course because as we're flashing back to her learning we're going to see she's going to be utilizing everything she's learned from Antonio Banderas's character to solve his murder, right? To investigate his murder. And each time we flash back, we're going to find out that she learned some skill that's going to be necessary for this next part. But no, that's not how this movie is either. Uh, you know, and as she investigates this murder, it's going to go far deeper than it's expected. Like, that's what I'm assuming at this point in the movie, like just assuming where it's going to go, right? It's going to be this crazy mystery. And as she investigates and peels back the layers, she's going to uncover it's much deeper. And I mean, technically on paper it is, but the way the layers are peeled are not satisfying at all uh so another flashback he's going to investigate a murder which is the murder that he's investigating when he gets killed himself Uh, and she wants to go with him to investigate this murder because there's never any murders like it's so rare that an investigator is investigating a murder in this area so it's like this is the big case And he doesn't want to screw it up. And she, of course, is worried that there's some hard-boiled noir shit that's going to happen. Again, referencing neo-noir 
genres. And so I'm assuming, okay, this is that, like everything she's referencing is going to happen in this movie. No. I do love the setting of this, whether it's Ireland or the UK. I just, you know, anything set outside of the US is a plus for me. Uh, kind of a little minor action moment, a little bit of tension where the inv- they're investigating the crime. They go to the crime scene, this mansion or whatever, and there's private security there that's not going to let them in without a warrant. So they decide to disarm the private security guys that drew weapons on them before leaving just to kind of show them Listen, buddy, you might be private security, but we're investigators. We can take you all down, which just seems kind of ridiculous. And still at this point, I'm wondering how serious this movie is trying to be. Is this supposed to be, is this just a fun action movie? Is this supposed to be relying on the mystery of it all? Because there's like these action, that's like, that would be a scene in an action movie. You could see investigators putting private security guys in their place in an action movie. But not so much in like a serious noir film. Like like Seven. Like you never saw those two guys in Seven fucking take out private security. Especially when this movie's already commented on how boring being an investigator is, and all of a sudden these investigators are just like putting private security in place. Which, how good are those private security guards for like anybody to just come in and like they are like low rent <laughs> private security? Like the the this rich family went to the bottom of the barrel of private security uh, to protect this thing that they don't really care is even like they are so open with it and we get another flashback of her again referencing noir books right she has a she was before you know in her before life when she was drunk she was a librarian uh, so she understands she's really good at research researching things Uh, And then we find out her backstory that she was sexually abused by her grandfather for years. And then she learned Brazilian jiu-jitsu in order to get back at him again, bait him into doing it again. And then her breaking his arm, as we see, she does an arm bar on him, gives him an arm bar, breaks his elbow uh, when he tries to do it again. Which is like... Obviously, that's going to refer to what's going on in the bigger story now that we're introduced to her backstory. And is an interesting aspect. I mean, is one of the dark aspects of this movie that it is about uh, predators. It is about sexual predators towards young girls. So it makes sense, but it's like... Nah, it's just like referenced so you know that that's part of her backstory i mean we get a little flashback to it but it's like we need to tell you this about her so it means more when she sees something in the next scene so then they go the crime scene it's all cleaned up now they they go to the crime scene it's all cleaned up other than there's items missing in addition to the evidence that was already collected. So the evidence that was collected is gone, but there's other items that are missing that weren't part of evidence. Uh, And she finds a secret room pretty easily. I mean, they break into this house. The security is nothing. The locked door she instantly picks. uh, And there's a little statement. It's like, good thing he taught me how to do this thing. Um and they find uh, she's like, is there a secret room? And then all of a sudden she's opening a door like it. There was no like when people find secret rooms in good movies. It's interesting how they come across this secret room, a little bit of dust blowing in a breeze or the measurement of rooms is off. You know how they find the panic room in panic room is interesting because they realize the size of the room is too small. Shouldn't there be another room here? 
so there's interesting ways to do it but this she's just like oh it looks like there's a hidden door here and clearly it's like looks like a door and she opens it up but with just like the wall molding on it and it's this little thing where they would chain people up just like this little cubby hole where they would put their sex slave women and chain them up so that happens pretty effortlessly she finds that and then you have the killer shows up the killer shows up is also in the house so now you have the person investigating that just found this secret door is now having a chit chat with the killer she instantly finds out who the killer is but the killer we find out was the person who was previously in that box chained up And uh, she apologizes for killing Tallini, Antonio Banderas' character. She's like, I'm so sorry. I thought he was part of their thing. It's just like... And the way this actress speaks, she has like a Southern California Valley girl kind of a tone to her. Like she's an influencer is how she speaks but she's killing people and is supposedly traumatized for being locked in a room a little cubby for years or whatever like she doesn't speak like somebody who's traumatized she doesn't speak like somebody who's killing people she's out to kill everybody she speaks like she's going to shop at sephora and do an ig live to show her haul it's like so upbeat and the fact that she finds the killer like there's no zero research needed zero investigation needed to find the killer the killer just shows up it's like hey i'm the killer sorry i killed Antonio Banderas, I know you two were tight. I thought he was part of the thing. I guess I should have done some research. Maybe I should have just killed the people that I remember seeing at the playhouse. Clearly never saw him. The lawyer, maybe. You probably have seen the lawyer. Come on. Not killing the lawyer? And Kate, and Jamie, the killer, mentioned, which Jamie, Jamie and Casey uh jamie mentions that they are so she knows casey's past and casey is offended at the thought that they are the same in any way but doesn't want to hear why they're similar like as if as if casey just didn't walk into a place where this woman was being sexually abused and that she herself comes from a history of sexual abuse and her not being able to put those two together and just not wanting to hear why because she doesn't want to think that they could be the same person it's just like i don't the mentality of these people the psychology of what's going on doesn't make any sense And I mean, with the chipper voice, doesn't doesn't really help either. Um, and it turns out that the crime scene is the lawyer's house, so it's like you have a lawyer whose client was murdered in the lawyer's house. The lawyer wants the inv- desperate for the investigation to be called off. Like it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't like why would. Yeah. Obviously, he wants the, the investigation to be called off, but he's not going to go to the police and be like, hey, you got to stop investigating my the crime scene. You need to stop investigating the person that was murdered in my house. Who's my client? I swear I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> like, I'm a prime suspect, but I'm going to ask you to stop investigating. And nothing's a mystery, right? Just more details just easily come to light finding out that there's like this group of pedophiles in this town this cabal of pedophiles 
that chains girls up to sexually abuse. And they op- also collect trophies, which in the playhouse is a, a library of all kinds of evidence, photos, video documentation of all their crimes, a library of CDs, of DVDs, of Polaroids and scrapbooks, like just and easily accessible. If you're in this house, you just have to open a door and you see this library of their trophies. And even collecting hair from these girls. So not only do they have visual evidence in the form of video and fo- f- photographs, Polaroid photographs, but also DNA evidence of previous. Like, it's like the people not at all trying to hide what they're doing. In fact, collecting and amassing a library of content. And then you find out that they're pretty open about the playhouse. When she's confronted, right, The when our investigator, Jamie, confronts a couple of these old people who are part of this playhouse, they are completely open about how long Jamie was there. I'm sorry, uh, Casey. Casey confronts them. They're super open about how long Jamie was there. Like, oh, yeah, the girl that is out to kill us that we sexually abused, she was with us for da-da-da-da-da years. And then mentions that they would love to add Casey if she was younger. This is how open they are. They have no problem. Yes, we have this playhouse. Yes, we had Jamie chained up for so many years. And by the way, you would have been chained up too. It's like, zero problem just being completely open with everything they're doing no investigation needed confirmation instantly no discussion of like well is jamie telling the truth or is this are these things really happening and the next scene yes they are happening and the people that are in charge of it are completely okay talking about it in the open uh, and the score is trying to do a lot to try and tell you tension is ramping up. Uh, but it's so obvious that these old people are part of the playhouse and, uh, getting attacked by Jamie, as they mentioned, uh, when they were leaving, you know, they know what's going on. They know that Jamie's out to kill them. Uh, then there was the the old lady that's part of it was able to take them out with pepper spray and a kick to the face, right? They go in, trying to go in to kill all of them, and the old lady all of a sudden becomes a badass. Uh, and then ends up being tortured by her. Uh, and then you have this emotional ending, quote-unquote, between them. Uh, doesn't feel earned at all. I don't believe that they would have such an emotional bond, these two women. Uh, I, I think, you know, they could have if this movie was written differently, right? I mean, it's the story allows for it since they both suffered similar trauma. There's plenty of opportunity to have written a script where I believe that these two people have been through something together and have, like, this catharsis of stopping it from happening to other people. But I don't think this movie pulls it off at all. Um, I do love the scenes with Casey and Antonio Banderas. You know, seeing their bond was great. But she never solves any mystery. She does nothing to solve a mystery. From the moment she broke into the the crime scene... Uh, she instantly meets the killer. She easily finds this hidden room. So puts all of the pieces together. Uh, the killer pretty much did all of the work. The movie could have been all about Jamie getting revenge on this cult, right? Make it a revenge film about Jamie getting out. And on the outside, you have this investigator that's trying to stop them, but then realizing 
oh maybe this this revenge vigilante revenge thing we should just let her do it because she's going to be able to to do things that the law won't be able to do right whatever could have been that movie wasn't that movie and then on the outside you know having the investigator she finds out what the abuse what the abuse was and you know giving her freedom to to do the revenge stuff um but you know in this movie the lead doesn't solve anything and didn't stop anybody uh it's also wasn't a noir because of that as well you know i i didn't really like the killer's performance uh you know i just it felt way too happy and energetic like she was doing a harley quinn basically she felt like she was doing harley quinn uh which felt super out of place uh maybe if it was more unhinged like a harley quinn it would have worked but you know just go dark and disturbed uh anything other than what this performance was uh moments felt like this movie wanted to be kind of the girl with the dragon tattoo like an interesting suspense mystery uh but we uncover the purpose of this cult right we see the people involved and the killer right away there is no effort involved in exposing everything um it's just everybody just kind of introducing themselves uh the lawyer is a major uh loose end as well nothing happened to him right all of his clients are dead but uh and have been uncovered but you know no no idea of him going to jail participating in this in some ways this feels like a, a mid 90s like uh mid budget thriller which i loved 90s mid budget thrillers i loved them and i probably would have loved this one uh but because it wasn't uh that well told i really just didn't feel very thrilled um it wasn't thrilling to me i would have rather seen a movie be about him training her would have been great than actually working the a case together uh you know or seeing them on a case together i just think there's a lot of missed opportunities you could have like this buddy cop investigator type of a situation you know you have the experienced older investigator and the young impatient newcomer and they have to investigate the stabbing together uh evade the attack from jamie to make her seem like she's a real threat uh, to them and then discover that uh, they have similarities they have similar trauma right and somehow that helps with their investigation then it becomes a race to see who can get the evidence before jamie kills all of them right would have been super interesting this is not that movie uh it wasn't horrible again it wasn't horrible i did enjoy it as a, just a a, a fun low impact watch turn your brain off and just enjoy it uh so yeah thank you for tuning in i want to thank everybody for tuning in to this episode of the ray taylor show i do hope you enjoyed my thoughts on cult killer don't forget to tune in every monday wednesday and friday for more movie and tv show reviews and join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder until next time enjoy the show Subscribe to The Ray Taylor Show on YouTube and everywhere podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Purchase Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.